Welcome to Travel with Kids Caribbean, where interludes with dolphins and rides on seaplanes are interspersed with diaper changes and temper tantrums. Traveling with kids is a challenge, but the educational benefits of exposing your children to different cultures, historical and natural landmarks, and the family bonding that takes place when you depart from that everyday routine far outweigh the trials. Well, this stuff happens at home too, right? But not this, so let's hit the road. Meet our traveling family. Their mission, to seek out fun and adventure. While traveling with kids, discovering activities and attractions that are interesting for the whole family. Destination Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. This will be more than just a vacation, as our family will experience the excitement and adventure of traveling off the beaten path, seeking out unique places to stay, and traveling on local ferries about the islands to really experience the Caribbean history and culture. Come along as we introduce you to the adventure and mystery that awaits your family in these Caribbean islands. San Juan is the capital of Puerto Rico, a crossroads of cultures that is influenced by the New World and the Old. Spanish conquistadors and the Carib Indians they encountered upon arriving here mixed with African influences from slaves brought over to work on plantations. The tourist areas of Isla Verde and Condado in San Juan are world-renowned as a contemporary vacation destination with wide beaches lined with upscale American and European hotels. But it's really old San Juan that captures the hearts and imaginations of kids and adventuresome parents. On the small island at the entrance to the San Juan Bay, the original city of San Juan was built in the early 1500s. The city is surrounded by magnificent stone walls that are over 40 feet high. People who lived here had to build the walls this high to keep out the pirates and fend off invading colonial powers. You can still visit the original forts and buildings around San Juan. Decades later, after pirates had faded and peace descended upon the Caribbean, the new city of San Juan began to thrive outside these walls. The area in old San Juan fell into disrepair. It wasn't until about 50 years ago that the restoration of old San Juan began. Today, visitors to old San Juan are greeted by cheerful buildings painted in bright pink, yellow, and green. Broad iron balconies overflowing with geraniums hang over old San Juan's narrow blue cobblestone streets. These narrow streets plunge tightly through the colorful facade, creating the feeling of being in a different century. It's like being on a movie set or strolling down the streets of Spain many years ago. Most of San Juan's major attractions are located within one square mile, making it easy to take a walking tour of the city. Be sure to bring some good shoes and a lightweight stroller or baby backpack for the young ones because San Juan is also notorious for its steep hills and bumpy cobblestone streets. Today we visit El Moro, San Juan's most impressive historical site. There are tourist assistants in the main square who told us to enter the fort across the grassy park on the west side of old San Juan.
It costs only a couple dollars to go in and is well worth the entry. The walls in El Moro are even taller than in old San Juan and 140 feet tall. That's as high as a modern 14-story building and over 10 feet thick in some places. In days gone by, this is where all went down. Pirates left their tall ships in the harbor to scale the slippery stone walls, while cannons thundered from deep within the fort. It took six men to shoot a cannon. Some would clean the barrels with long poles, while others would stuff the gunpowder and cannonballs into the cannon, while yet another would ignite it, firing the cannon. This six-story fort clings to the rocks at the water's edge. The great stone walls provide an excellent hands-on experience for learning about pirates and colonial times. Candace, it's Captain Hook's sword. On the main level is an interesting museum that gives a map and miniature model of the fort. And the gift shop is loaded with pirate booty and other interesting books and treasures. Be sure to check out the view from the windows on the main level to see the fort below. It gives you a great idea of the grand scale of the fort complex. A wide set of stairs from this entry level leads down to the lower level and the main attraction. Set on a large open square surrounded by towering walls, the lower level of El Moro is where the big battles took place. The rusted old cannons are hands-on. Kids can pretend to fire at ships in the bay below, although today, the harbor is full of cruise ships and speedboats. Leading off the main expanse of courtyard, narrow hallways lead to bunkers and towers where soldiers once stood guard high over the rocky shoreline. You can feel the well-worn track in the stone where men ran up and down the tunnels, keeping watch, loading cannons, and firing upon their attackers. The kids have fun playing hide-and-seek and pretending to be invading pirates here. It's a nice break from the heat of the day for us, too. Further down in El Moro is the living quarters, with a kitchen area and vast stone rooms attached by arches and stairwells. You can find forts like this one all over the Caribbean, but El Moro is the largest and most dramatic example of this kind of Spanish colonial architecture. Next, it's on to find some of San Juan's other attractions. The old town of San Juan is loaded with relics of the past. Everywhere you look, there's an ancient fortress wall or an old watchtower, but not everything in San Juan is old. San Juan's narrow streets are overflowing with upscale boutiques, modern art, and fusion cuisine. On display, everything from traditional Puerto Rican Santos and masks like these to expensive jewelry and clothing, to indigenous spices. Check out the Caribbean spice stores. They allow you to taste the different spices and sauces they sell. Try the banana ketchup. It tastes better than it sounds. At night, outdoor cafes line the lamp-lit cobblestone streets for dining under the stars. Enjoy the fresh sea air while dining on everything from traditional Puerto Rican foods to Caribbean fusion cuisine. With a wide range of foods, it's easy to find something for everyone. A favorite among kids and adults alike is fried plantains. And... Puerto Rico has lots of fast food restaurants, so it's easy to find comfort foods from home for the kids. This helps with the transition to a new culture. Ben and Jerry have been vacationing in Puerto Rico for years. Looking around at San Juan's colorful buildings, intricately carved stonework, statues and fountains, it's easy to see why the town is so packed with art museums and historical sites. One museum of particular interest to families is the Museo del Niño, an interactive children's museum. The town is dotted with grand Spanish churches like San Juan Cathedral with its vaulted engraved ceilings and open plazas like the Plaza de Armas. Follow the lead of the locals. Take time out to relax in one of the plazas a very Spanish tradition. The kids love to feed and chase the pigeons while we hang out on a park bench and watch life going by here in old San Juan. The artistic history is found in the architecture of many of San Juan's hotels too. 
but none so noticeably as the Gallery Inn. Located on a hill high above the ocean in Old San Juan, this unique inn is run by well-known local artist Jan de Asopo, whose fountains and stonework can be found throughout Puerto Rico. Kids love talking to the beautiful exotic birds and watching the turtle who lives in the fountain at the Gallery Inn. The courtyards here drip with green vines and wild-colored tropical flowers. It seems like every nook and cranny holds a sculpture or a painting. This is a great way to immerse the kids in the world of art. Children definitely do relate to art, particularly if they have some knowledge of it. And my grandchildren, you know, since the time they were born, they were surrounded by it, and I believe that it's given them another dimension on life. The gallery in itself is a work of art originally built in the 1740s. With ancient walls covered in faux painting and sculptures peering down from the rooftops, it is like staying at a museum, but a museum you can touch and feel. Chamber music is often heard wafting through the windows of the Gallery Inn's music room. And in the lobby, a player piano continuously spouts the classics. The classics are that which will last forever, whether it be painting, whether it be sculpture, whether it be music, and it still hasn't lost uh, value. So learning about the classics, I think, is a very important element for children. After a delicious breakfast of fresh mangoes, pineapple and bananas, warm bread and papaya jam, we're heading to El Yunque, home to the Caribbean National Forest. It's about an hour out of San Juan. There are loads of tours going out there, but we want the flexibility of having our own car, so we're going to rent. Most U.S. car rental agencies have a presence here in Puerto Rico. We're here at the rental car agency and our car is ready. Some quick directions. Right. And we're off. This is your car. Thank you. Have a good day. Now we're ready to head out to the rainforest. El Yunque's peak rises high over Puerto Rico and is often shrouded in a wet mist. The Caribbean National Forest is the only rainforest in the U.S. National Park System. The park protects over 40 square miles of pristine tropical rainforest and rivers. La Coca Falls can be seen from the road as it plummets down an 80-foot cliff and streams under the road. La Coca Falls was great, but we met a family last night that recommended visiting La Mina Falls. They said the trail they took was pretty steep for the little ones. So we're going to ask at the park office to find the easiest way down. Well, if you go down to Beach Street Trail, um, go down that way, it's easier for the kids. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's been a long morning for the kids already, and they're getting a bit cranky. So we're going to take it slow. I think once we're surrounded by jungle, they'll be as excited as we are. Gonna walk. El Yunque's 23 miles of nicely groomed trails range in difficulty, and some are marked with interpretive signs like this one that tell visitors about the indigenous plant and animal life. Some of El Yunque's trees are thousands of years old and tower over the forest in a great green canopy. We're taking Big Tree Trail, which is about one and a half miles round trip to reach the waterfall. The jungle in the Caribbean National Forest is amazing. Everything is so green. Long vines dangle from tall moss, covered trees, and water drips from just about everything. The tree roots are in tiny bundles packed tightly above the ground, and the leaves here are huge. More than 200 inches of rain a year keeps everything moist and green. and keeps tourists jogging for the shelters along the pass. The chirping of the coqui frog, the Puerto Rican national mascot, sets the rhythm of the jungle, and the rain drumming on the leaves gives it a good beat. Nature's classical music. The trail is paved most of the way, and the kids are doing great. 
spying birds and snails along the way. We reach the waterfall in just 45 minutes and enjoy our snacks and a cool dip in the natural pools before heading back to the car. We're leaving San Juan today for Puerto Rico's west coast, known for its beaches and surfing. Although Rincon is only 75 miles from San Juan, we're taking the scenic route there so we can visit Puerto Rico's famously restored Spanish colonial towns. Located on the southern part of the island, Ponce is a more relaxed, timeless version of old San Juan. Hundreds of pastel-colored, elaborately restored buildings line the cobblestone streets that lead to Plaza Las Delicias. The bell towers and stained glass of Our Lady of Guadalupe stand guard over the square, while Fuente de Leones, Fountain of Lions, dazzles tourists with its grand water display. But the Parque de Bombas definitely takes center stage. Painted in bright red and black stripes, this arabesque building houses a unique museum paying tribute to the firefighters of Ponce. Ponce takes its place in the historical and artistic development of Puerto Rico very seriously. The streets are packed with museums, art galleries, theaters, and other treasures. There are hop-on, hop-off trolleys that will bring you to all the important sites. Well, I think the kids have had their fill of colonial buildings. So we're off to our next destination, Rincon. We'll use this beachfront town on the west coast of Puerto Rico as a base to explore the area attraction. Lining the coast along Rincon are small tourist villages with cheap guest houses and beachfront restaurants like these. The laid-back atmosphere of this Rincon restaurant is great for families. We can relax in the hammocks while waiting for our food, or check the horizon for incoming pirate ships. The area around Rincon is internationally acclaimed for its surfing, almost as famous as Hawaii amongst the longboard set. But even if surfing is not your game, Rincon Beach Resort, located just south of town, offers a great lineup of family fun. The kids love all the activities at the hotel paddle boats, table tennis, life-size chess. Nathan loves learning how to play golf on this miniature golf course. There's also a children's playground here where the kids have made lots of new friends. And we're lucky enough to catch the Rincon Festival with great food, entertainment, and fun rides for the kids. After a couple of days spent relaxing on the tranquil shores of Rincon Beach, we're ready to explore. A quick bite and we're going to head out to the couple of the area's prime attractions. Krispy Kreme's got nothing on this place. Check out the shark donuts. Las Cavernas del Rio Camuy is one of the largest cave systems in the world, with 268 acres. The tour takes visitors by tram to the entrance of the cave. And then by foot into Cueva Clara, a 200-foot sinkhole. The Great Chamber opens up to reveal ceilings 150 feet high and giant stalactites and stalagmites. You can see the water dripping from the rock formations, so it's easy to imagine how water carved these caves. 
Over a million years of water erosion have formed cave systems like Rio Camuy throughout Puerto Rico. As the underground rivers travel from the mountains to the ocean, they carve tunnels in the soft rock. Rio Camuy provides tourists with easy access to this mysterious underground world. The Puerto Rican government installed paved pathways through here, making it one of the most accessible cave tours in the world. You can bring a stroller and let the kids relax as they take in the sights. Beyond the Great Chamber, tourists are led to an opening hundreds of feet deep. Here visitors can see the cave continuing into the depths of the rock. Water flows down the walls here, and many believe it is Ponce de Leon's infamous Fountain of Youth. Visitors can drink from the fabled fountain, which according to legend, offers eternal youth. Take a peek over the ledge here and see the river rushing by hundreds of feet down. This cave is also home to a large family of bats, and this is a great area to see them in action. Did you see some bats? Yes, we saw, I saw a bat in the little cave, and they were going to one rock to another rock, well, rock and they were flying, and it, it almost went on my grandma. Alexis is on vacation in Puerto Rico with her family from New York. It's really cool to see like thing, like creatures that you don't even know exist. Nathan liked the bats too. We even picked this one up for him to take home. Just down the road through the hilly karst country of Puerto Rico is Arecibo Observatory, the world's largest radio telescope. Here, scientists study the atmosphere, the stars, and the solar system while listening for signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. The 20-acre dish was made famous by the movie Contact, parts of which were filmed here. We're caught in this tropical rain shower at Arecibo. Lucky for us, the observatory also has an interesting hands-on visitor center with exhibits on the sun and our solar system the Earth's weather systems, and more. We're visiting Puerto Rico during the hurricane season, so we expected to encounter some weather delays. The hotel alerted us late yesterday afternoon that a tropical storm might be heading our way. This morning, they called to the east end of the island to find out if our ferry to Vieques Island was running. But no one seems to know the answer yet, so we're going to head over to that side of the island and find out. The ferries for Vieques are not running today. Locals say the ferry should be up and going tomorrow, but our first call is to our travel insurance company. Well, it looks like we're stuck here for the night because the ferries aren't running, but it's not costing us a dime. That's why we always recommend travel insurance. Well, it looks like the boat service to Vieques Island is running today. So we need to head over to the harbor in a hurry if we want to make the ferry. About halfway between Puerto Rico and St. Thomas, the island of Vieques maintains much of the allure that originally drew tourists to the Caribbean. This small island is lined with deserted beaches, trimmed with pristine reefs and sea life. Cars are in very limited supply on the island, so horseback is a very common mode of transportation. On the way to our hotel, there were groups of children riding horseback down the roads next to the cars. The kids got a real kick out of that. Vieques is so much different than the mainland. It's like we took a step back in time. Once used as a training ground for the United States Navy, the island of Vieques has relied on traditional fishing and farming to sustain itself. Tourism has only recently become a key economic driver for this island.
Today we're going to take a tour of some of the island's secluded beaches, but first we've got to stock up on supplies. We ran out of diapers and here they are on the island of Vieques. You can find pretty much anything you need from home, even at some of the most remote destinations. What do you got? Good thing we've got these diapers because shortly after breakfast they were in high demand. This is Green Beach, one of the more isolated beaches on the island. We've been told not to stray too far off the path because this was once home to the Navy's artillery range. This narrow stretch of beach is home to some of the best snorkeling outcroppings on Vieques. But we've got to get back to the hotel to make plans for our special kayak tour tonight. A couple miles east of the southern town of Esperanza, known for its kickback attitude, cheap restaurants and accommodations, is Mosquito Bay, also known as Phosphorescent Bay because of the tiny animals who glow when disturbed. This bay on Vieques has one of the highest concentrations of these small animals anywhere in the world. We're going to take the kids out on a kayak tour of the bay and are due to meet our guide from Golden Heron Echo Tours just after sunset in Esperanza. We're a bit nervous about Seamus as it's past his bedtime and the whole tour takes place in the dark. The bay is incredible. Streaks of green radiate in the water as a fish swims by or your paddle hits the water. I've never seen anything like it. Nathan had a great time splashing around and getting what he called Tinkerbell water sparkling on his hands. This morning, we had the Wyndham reserve a car to take us from the ferry dock in Fajardo to docks in San Juan where we board our flight. This will be our first seaplane ride. We are taking a Seaborne Airlines flight from San Juan in Puerto Rico to St. Thomas. Views from the seaplane are incredible. The sapphire waters of the Caribbean Sea stretch out endlessly below us. St. Thomas is straight ahead. The flight is only about a half an hour, but the hum of the engines lulled the kids to sleep in about five minutes. The unique Spanish colonial history of Puerto Rico and the rich cultural heritage it left behind has been a great learning experience for all of us. As we land here in St. Thomas, we're looking forward to discovering new cultures and amazing adventures in these Virgin Islands. To explore more family-friendly destinations and get tips on traveling with kids, visit travelwithkids.tv. Ready for the adventure of a lifetime? Join Travel with Kids for a family adventure in Thailand, Peru, South Africa, Ireland, Fiji, and more. Take advantage of Travel with Kids' decades of family travel experience. You decide where to go? We do all the legwork to build your ideal journey. Each Travel with Kids family adventure tour immerses your family in the history, culture, and nature of a destination. Try new foods. Chicken, rice, and olives. And spiders. Learn new adventure activities together. Kids make friends with kids. Adults enjoy relaxation time. So this summer, do something different. Join Travel with Kids for a true family adventure. Travel with Kids is now offering family adventure tours. Your family can join our family in exotic locations around the globe. 